I guess Sennheiser wireless radio systems now need an upgrade because here we have a new player on the market, Deity Theos, for two transmitters. Let's review that. What's good guys, my name is Oleg Nikitin, you're watching No Limits On channel. So Deity Theos is a UHF system for two channels, so two transmitters, one receiver, and it does have a huge frequency range from 550 MHz to 960 MHz. It means that if you go to a different country or a different location, you'll always be able to find some free frequencies and be able to work. Of course, it lacks something like 470 MHz and above until 550, but still it's a super versatile range. And it's a great and convenient system if you travel a lot, because in different countries you'll be able to pick different frequencies or different bands, so you'll be able to record wherever you are, no matter if some frequencies are blocked by government or by, I don't know, military or something else, you'll have a ton of options. Deity Theos can record internally to micro SD cards in 32-bit float, by the way, but in the US there is a special patent from the company called Zaxcom until 2025 at least, and this patent could not allow the system to record internally and transmit the audio simultaneously. So you either can record or as a field recorder, for instance, or you can transmit the audio like a regular system, for instance, the Sennheiser systems, G4, G3, whatever. So it's only for the US market, and this is the global version. On the box, it says global version. So if you have a global version, you can record and actually transmit the audio simultaneously. But if you are going to the US with a global version, the app will um, actually find your location and understand that you are in the US and will block this functionality only recording or only transmitting. That's a bummer, but I think after 2025, maybe a bit later, we'll not have this issue, but as for now, keep that in mind. Both transmitters and the receiver, they all are made out of aluminum or aluminium if you are out of the US, so it's a super lightweight and a sturdy body, like the build quality, and also the system comes in the Pelican style case with a lot of foam and a ton of accessories, so let's have a look. By the way, the whole kit weighs a little bit under 1.5 kilograms, which is not light by any means, but almost the whole weight comes from the plastic carrying case itself. But the transmitters and the receiver are super lightweight thanks to aluminum construction. Even with the batteries, they are really easy to carry and you can remove the batteries and give power through USB Type-C, thus having a bit more lightweight setup. So guys, now let's have a look at the kit. So in the kit we have two transmitters, they are called DBTX. Also the receiver, which is called D2RX, almost like R2D2, but not exactly. Also we have three mounting brackets to mount it on the belt, for instance, and a special plate to mount it to a camera or to a stand. Eight different antennas, they have different colors on tops, so they are for different frequencies to kind of adjust and have the most uh, stable, the strongest signal. And some of those antennas, they are simply straight and some have a, like um, adjustable angle. So those with adjustable angle are for the receiver and the other ones are for the transmitter. And you have eight of those. Underneath this little pad, we have different accessories. So here we have the level air microphone. We actually have two in the kit. Those are the WLAV Pros from Deity and they are sounding really nicely. We have a secure connection on the mini jack right here, a pop filter, a special clamp holder, and all in all those two Leolia microphones cost $120 each and they are included in the box, which is great. USB Type-C cable for charging or for um, file management. So you can simply plug your transmitter into a computer, go to the transfer files mode on the transmitter, and without even putting away the SD card from the transmitter, you can send the files to your computer, which I did, and it's super easy to use and convenient. So here we have the TRS to TRS cable with a locking connector on one end for plugging in your camera, for instance. Also here we have two XLRs to mini jack with locking connectors. Those are made for sound bags, for sound producer, I mean sound guys, not really sound producers, for sound guys to plug those into the sound bag mixer or something else. And um, basically that's it, except for the USB type A to USB type C adapter, because you can use this system since it's digital system, you can use it with a smartphone or with a computer easily. So now let's have a closer look at the receiver itself. Here we have a pretty big and bright and uh, actually colorful display. 
On the display we can see the battery status of the receiver and two transmitters, the frequencies that transmitters are using, the volume levels, also we have the little LEDs that show you the status, for instance if it blinks green everything is fine, if it's red that means that the transmitter is muted and so forth. On top we have two slots for SMA antennas, which is great, you can pick a different antenna if you want to, to extend the range, or if your antenna is broken for some reason you can easily replace it. Uh, say hi to Sennheiser, which have integrated antennas, and I broke one of mine because I've been using the Sennheiser systems for more than five years, the G3 one. So here we have A and B outs, so it's a two-channel uh, system. So for instance, you can have on the A channel two transmitters, one on the left channel, one on the right, and on the B you can have a different set of settings, like the audio monitoring via headset, or you can have two transmitters split into two channels, it uses the AA batteries, which is nice, you can always swap out batteries, you can even pick the type of battery that you're using, like lithium or alkaline batteries or DD proprietary batteries that are in the kit as well, uh, actually six batteries, which is great. And in terms of battery life, it lasts for about seven to eight hours with regular mediocre batteries, but with DD batteries it does last a bit longer. So in terms of the menu settings, it's super easy to navigate. You have your volume rockers and your menu button, so you can navigate the menu from here, or you can do everything with the Citus Audio app on your smartphone, which is a great app, by the way. So here you can pick the frequencies, make a scan, find a spare channel. You can actually dial in manually your frequency that you want to. You can even limit the range that you're using, or you can do it with the app. It's a bit more convenient to do with the app. So you can have an output type, as I said before, so you can have an A set to RX1 or RX1 plus RX2, and you can have your B channel set as a monitoring or RX2 or RX1 plus RX2. So a lot of options in here. So we have a level signal, for instance, you can change the level of your transmitters, level A, level B on the output your monitoring settings. Also here you can change the name of the device if you have a lot of those devices on set, it will be easier to navigate. Bluetooth reset, battery settings, and by the way, the battery settings you can pick between four different types of batteries. Also you can change the sleep settings, RF settings, system settings like brightness, LEDs, like system reset, firmware update, language, and so on. So it's a super simple system to understand, to navigate, and I like it, it's much more easy to understand than the Sennheiser system, which is a bit clunky in my opinion, and this bright colorful screen makes it a lot easier. Now let's have a look at the transmitter itself. It has a headphone jack, so you can monitor the audio from the transmitter straight on it. So you can come to your client or to a speaker and check the audio right there, or you can play back the audio and check it if it was recording correctly without going back to the headphones and all that. So it has the USB Type-C, as I said before, either for powering without the AA batteries or as a backup power or as a uh, data solution so you can actually offload the 32-bit float files or 24-bit float files to your computer with a USB Type-C. So on top we have a threaded mini jack connector 3.5 millimeter and also the SMA antenna port so you can swap out the antennas as I said before. So we have different LEDs, it shows you the status of your recording, if you're muted, also the power, if it's enabled the extra RF power, it can have 10 milliwatts, 25 milliwatts or 50 milliwatts of extra RF power, so you can have stronger signal in busier environments. In terms of the settings, if you hit the back button, it will show you the red LED and it's on mute. If you press up or down arrows, you can change the gain and actually it changes at up to 30 decibels. So here we have the frequency on the screen, the decibel levels, the loudness scale, also the time code, the battery status, it's also a colorful bright LED display, which is nice. And if you press and hold the upper button, you go into the recording menu, so you can start and stop recording from here. And if you press the lower button or go down arrow, you can go into the timecode mode, you can change the frame rate, you can jam sync the timecode from different devices um, with a wire, of course, or you can do it wirelessly with a TC1 from DED. And it's a super nice feature to have as well. So when we go to the main menu, of course, here we have the frequency settings, so you can pair the devices, you can set it manually, or you can limit the range of frequencies. 
you can go to the gain mode we did it already the level the mic level so you can have it at three volts or five volts or the line in so it can accept the line level signal which is great so here we have the time code sync menu we already saw it the record menu the record mode so you can pick 24 bit or 32 bit float internal recording or if it's recording always or manually or it's recording after the time code was synced with the tc1 and time code uh, device for instance there are rf power that i've mentioned before three steps of low cut filter 75 100 and 150 hertz also we can change the name of the device we can go into the files and play back the files with the headphones tweak the leds so you can turn them on and off you can go into the monitor settings and change the volume of your headphones if you are listening through this headphone jack also here we have the bluetooth reset different battery settings system settings like language day time you can assign the hotkeys if you want to you can change the screen brightness you can format the sd card and you can go into the reader mode to connect to your computer and it will be uh, simply like a card reader which is great so all in all pretty easy to understand to navigate and to be honest guys you don't actually need to go into the settings of the transmitters and the receivers themselves you can simply go into the Citus audio app and do almost everything you want to through the app a few words about the timecode. So the Deity Theos does have a proper timecode system. And you would say that the Rode Wireless Pro also does have a timecode feature, but it's a bit of a different story. So I have a full review of the Rode Wireless Pro comparing it to the DJI mic. And I talk a lot about timecode in that video. I'll leave it here and in the description below. So if you do have a Deity TC1 timecode generator, you can wirelessly through the Citus Audio app uh, sync the timecode between all of those devices so the tc1 the transmitters and the receiver of the theos and the drift is one frame for 48 hours and i am sure that it's not more than two or three frames in 48 hours so in the beginning of the shoot you go to a location in the beginning of the day you sync the timecode and throughout 12, 14, 18 hours of your actual shooting process you'll be more than fine the next day you sync the timecode in the morning and go all day long. You can also jam sync the timecode via the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, I mean mini jack, and you can do it with a different system like tentacle sync or something else, so it is an option as well and the drift will be the same. So here's the Citus Audio app and it's a really convenient app to use. So here you have all of your transmitters, receiver, you can see different statuses like timecode, which frequency you're using, you can sync all of those. Uh, in terms of time code, you can use the DED TC1. It will be right here in the same app as well. You can go to the workstation mode. You can check the frequencies that are available, change the channel configuration. You can start and stop recording from the app. You can go into the time code sync menu and all of those different modes. A lot of settings like changing the gain, the monitoring gain, whatever. So really love this app. And you can use this app up to 10 or maybe 15 meters because it's a Bluetooth app and you are allowed to use it with any speaker without coming to a speaker, going into his pants and trying to adjust the settings, you know, opening the door, clicking some buttons. It's not convenient at all, especially uh, when I had the Sennheiser system. It was a real pain in the butt if I had to change the settings and I was filming a president of some big company doing an interview or whatever. It's not cool, guys, but with this app, this functionality, it's much easier and I love it. 300 feet working distance or the working range of the system, approximately 90 meters. And I've decided to test the system in the most RF strongly lit environment in my neighborhood, the mall with a lot of different frequencies, Wi-Fi spots and all that. So it was the busiest RF spot I could find on the on the hood. So basically I did compare it to the Rode Wireless Pro, which has 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi frequencies only, compared to a different set of frequencies, radio frequencies with the DD Theos. So here is my test. Enjoy. So guys, now it's time for the range test and I have my transmitter on the back. Right now we're testing out the Rode Wireless Pro 2.4 GHz system, which is not the best solution for this type of environment. We have a ton of frequencies in here, different stores like electronic store right behind me. And all in all, you can see I'm in a mall. 
So right now I have my transmitter on the back, so my body is blocking the signal between the transmitter and the receiver, and I'm like five meters away from the camera. One, two, three, mic check. Now let me turn with my back towards the camera, but the transmitter is right here. You can probably even see it. So now guys, let's get a bit farther away, like 25 meters away from the camera, and I'm still having the straight line of sight because the transmitter is on the back. So here we are, one, two, three, mic check. I'm now blocking the signal with my body. So the transmitter is blocked and there is a lot of people as well. So let me turn around, one, two, three, mic check. Now we have the straight line of sight. And once again, there is a block with my body. So let's get further, like 50 meters away. Right now I'm still having the straight line of sight between the transmitter, which is on my back, and the receiver. So now it's around 50 meters and here is the store I've been talking about. This is the electronics store, so here we have a ton of Wi-Fi routers and all that stuff and people passing by. So one, two, three, mic check. I'm blocking the signal with my body. One, two, three, mic check, Rode Wireless Pro. And one, two, three, mic check. So let's go a bit further, like 75 meters away. So right now still the transmitter is on my back, so it should be more or less fine. So here we are. One, two, three, mic check. I'm blocking the signal with my body. One, two, three, mic check. And now let me turn around. One, two, three, mic check. Not blocking the signal with my body. And once again, I am blocking the signal with my body. So here are the results of the Rode Wireless Pro. And right now, guys, we're testing the Deity Theos system. So the transmitter, once again, is on my back. It's right here. I hope you can see it. So one, two, three, mic check, five meters uh, from the camera. I'm blocking the signal with my body, but I have scanned the frequencies beforehand, so I have the best frequency possible in this pretty RF intense environment. So now let's go further away and see if it works better than the Rode Wireless Pro. So we'll start off with, go with going to 25 meters away approximately. I'm not the best person in terms of measuring the distances, but still, so here we are, here we have some ATMs as well. So one, two, three, mic check, I'm blocking the signal with my body, so the transmitter is on the back, but I'm recording internally and I'll write down if we have something uh, in terms of drop-offs and you'll need to hear something from me. So once again, the cleaning machine is going, uh, like right here is probably also giving us some interference. So right now I'm about 50 meters away and the transmitter is on my back, let me turn around. So right now I'm blocking the signal with my body, here I am. And one, two, three, mic check, I'm blocking the signal. One, two, three, mic check, I'm not blocking the signal. And let's move a bit further, like 70 to 75 meters away probably. And we'll see if it does work better than the road. One, two, three, mic check, not blocking the signal. And one, two, three, mic check, I am blocking the signal and there is a lot of people passing by. So we'll see if the deity feels doing a better job in this environment. This is the busiest spot I could find <laughs> in my neighborhood in terms of RF frequencies. There is the shop I've been talking about, the electronics shop. So it's a lot of interference in here. And if it does work much better than the Rode Wireless Pro, I would not be surprised. But if it doesn't, it's something to consider as well. Well, guys, I was surprised with the results of the Rode Wireless Pro system. It did a pretty good job but the Deity Theos was almost flawless. And if you are uh, filming on a stadium or in a concert or every everywhere else where there's a lot of frequencies, the Deity Theos will be a much better solution due to different sets of frequencies. You can hop between frequencies, send different packages of audio and all that. So it's much more convenient, much more professional than something like a prosumer kit from Rode. And now guys, my traditional outdoors test in the forest. So I'm recording with both systems in 32-bit float and with a kit Lavalier microphones. One, two, three, mic check. One, two, three, mic check. Deity Theos. One, two, three, mic check. One, two, three, mic check. Rode Wireless Pro. And uh, to understand that it is a 32-bit float, I'm going to shout a little bit. Hey, hey! Oh! Hey, hey! Oh! So right now we're testing the Deity Theos system indoors. I have the gain set to plus 24 dB on the transmitter. In camera we have the gain set to 1, the least amount of gain. And we are recording straight into the Sony FX30. 
one, two, three, mic check, one, two, three, mic check. And right now you're hearing the Rode Wireless Pro system. The gain on the Wireless Pro is set to maximum 30 decibels and gain on the FX30 is set to one. One, two, three, mic check, one, two, three, mic check. And yes, we are using the kit level air mics of the Rode and of the D80. One, two, three, mic check, one, two, three, mic check, one, two, three, mic check, one, two, three, mic check. In terms of audio quality, I did enjoy both systems, both level air microphones, both in-camera sound and also the 32-bit float on board sound. So no complaints whatsoever, great audio quality. The Rode has a touch more bass and it's just a matter of taste. So a couple of times I've mentioned Sennheiser company that I've been using the Sennheiser G3 system a lot. So what's the difference between the Sennheiser systems and the Deity Theos? The main point of difference, in my opinion, is that the DD Theos does have a huge range of different frequencies, once again from 550 to 960. And the Sennheiser kits, they only do come in slots. So for instance, A1 for 70 MHz to 516 MHz, A 516 to 558, and G 566 to 608 MHz. So you can have three different sets of Sennheisers to cover almost exactly the same range as the Theos does. And just imagine the situation. You are on a trip with your Sennheiser kit, which costs more than $600, and it's a single-channel audio system. Don't forget that it's a two-channel audio system. And you do have only this system with you. You come to a different country, and this particular range, for instance, the G range from 566 to 608, it is strictly forbidden to use for some reason or it's too busy and you cannot get a clean signal and you need a separate system. You can buy a separate set of Sennheisers for almost double the price. So you will be able to kind of swap those out or to pick a special like different sets to different countries and all that, but it's not convenient at all. So you buy the Daily Theos once and you go to any country and the app will show you the available frequencies that you can use legally, which is important. So in my opinion, the Sennheisers need to make this kind of system with different frequencies to be able to compete with the Theos. Of course, you have a bit more pricey systems from Zaxcom, for instance, or different ones, but they are much more pricey than the Theos. So under $1,100, and this system is $1,100, I think this is the best bang for the buck. It also does have built-in recording, at least outside of the US and until 2025, as for now, but Sennheisers do not have built-in recorders as well. So this comes with two level EM microphones with detachable antennas and they are swappable. Sennheisers only have the built-in antennas. So in my opinion, Sennheiser is a no-go as for now. I did enjoy their products before. They were a bit clunky in terms of the menus, but now the Theos is the king of the hill, in my opinion. But what about Rode Wireless Pro system? Because it also does have 32-bit float, it's more compact, it's overall smaller, tinier, sounds as good. So why would you pick the DD Theos over the Wireless Pro from Rode? And I would tell you that if you are using the 2.4 GHz systems or Wi-Fi systems, you have a ton of problems with distances in crowdy places, stadiums, conferences, uh, different uh, events, all, the, all of that stuff. And uh, if the person is blocking the transmitter with the body, uh, I did have this <laughs> once or twice when people were hugging and I lost the signal completely. And if you want to use your audio system for live streams, you cannot use this system and you cannot trust this system. You can use it, you cannot trust it. Whereas with the DD Theos, you have always an available clear frequency that you can use on the live streams, in huge venues, on the stadiums, all of that stuff. So if you are a professional and you need the cleanest audio that comes to your camera or to the sound mixer or a sound guy, I would say 100% the Deity Theos is a better choice. But if you are like me, a regular videographer that does some corporate stuff and always monitors the audio and uh, I'm not live streaming a ton, so yeah, I'm pretty fine with the Rode Wireless Pro system, but I don't have the cases for using this system a lot. But all in all, the Deity Theos gets much more points, even compared to the Sennheiser systems or to the Rode systems. 
I know guys it's been a long video but here comes the conclusion. By the way, if you did enjoy the video, smash the like and subscribe bottles. So in a few words, the D Theos in my opinion is now the best bang for the buck UHF system on the market because it does pack a ton of features, great kit and it's super versatile for $1100 which is more than adequate in my opinion. By the way, Deity is a daughter company of the Aperture Lighting Company and they do make great lights. So they are a Chinese company, but still it's one of the best alongside DJI in terms of the quality of the products. And I do trust the Deity company. I've been using their products for many years. So in my opinion, it is better than the Rode Wireless Pro. It is better than any Sennheiser system as for now. It packs 32-bit float recording outside of the US. It packs timecode, which actually does work properly. It packs different frequencies, a huge variety of those. And a really nice app to have. So I've been talking about those advantages of the system all the time throughout the entire video, but I do not see a ton of disadvantages of this system to be honest guys i'm really impressed so guys pay closer attention to dd theo system and i would highly recommend it if you have some questions or something to mention please go down into the comment section below the like button and here is the video the full review and comparison of the rode wireless pro and dji mic see you in the next one guys take care bye